Hey guys, I'm Richard Beck with Beck Tools, and we're back again with op number two on the quench plates. Now, if you guys are interested in these sliding doors that I made for my MR1, let me know in the comments below. I did capture the footage, but I didn't know if it was worth posting. Anyways, if you want to see the video on how I did the sliding doors, leave a comment below, and I'll do that. So, that's my sliding doors. This is how I'm able to film all of these... Uh, things with this angle makes it super easy to get in there and clean the machine so in the last video we machined these aluminum quench plates in this video we're gonna have to slow it down because i have an eighth inch end mill i have to cut an o-ring groove and i have to um, bore some holes that are going to get threaded in another operation here's the risky part the slot, not too risky. The fact that it's an eighth inch end mill is you don't really get any warnings before the mill, the end mill snaps. A bigger end mill, you'll hear it and you'll be able to react and a lot of times compensate. If you're off on small end mills like this, they just snap. There's no, like, it doesn't sound bad. It just tick and it's gone. So um, that's a risk with the smaller end mills. Also, it's aluminum, so you could load those up when you're slotting. Here's the thing. This end mill only has three eighths of an inch length of cut, but I have to bore a hole five eighths deep um, just for the thread. So as long as there's enough room for the chips to get out of the hole, you won't bind up the end mill. So make sure you're not too aggressive if you're gonna do this type of thing, um, basically boring a hole deeper than the flute. Um, because if the chips cannot escape, they will bind and snap the end mill off. So, should be okay. Um, I'm trying to go easy on it, but we're going to go ahead and kick this off. I'm going to let you guys watch the entire thing. And feel free to fast forward throughout this process. If you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below. Um, let's get rolling. <laughs> Now, once again, I do have the mist coolant running because I am uh, slotting. Anytime I slot, I like to run the mist coolant. Um, although you guys can't see the end mill. It's right there. Well, you'll probably be able to see it. This side over here is a little harder to see. As soon as it moves, it'll become more visible. There we go. Eighth of an inch, two flute and milk toss. These new rapid speeds definitely help accelerate this program. Eighth of an inch end mill, the hole is 140,000, so it's not moving much. Barely interpolating. And it's really important that I don't break this end mill because the material alone is almost $60. Um, and the end mill is like 11 or 12. So you break an end mill that you can't get out, they're 70 bucks. And this is a prototype order, so it's not like I'm gonna make enough on this to pay for a screw up on my end. So the stakes are definitely higher. mist system is blocking the view.
just imagine with me. Let me generate uh, my Bob Ross, this happy little end mill, somewhere hidden in the in a mess of a mist system. <laughs> Sorry, I will stop. That's terrible. It's not even kind of funny. <laughs> Except for to me. All right, we've got like two more holes and then it's gonna go to slotting. Hey, we can see again. One thing, when you're making these micro movements super fast, it shakes the whole machine. Um, I could put stiffer legs on it, but I rarely machine holes this tiny. So, it's really not a problem. All right, are we done? Yep, all right. Now for the fun part. Fifteen thousand deep, hundred percent width, so full width slotting, eight thousand RPM, sixty-four inches per minute. That comes out to four thousand per tooth. This is a two flute end mill. And you really don't want to be recutting chips like I was as much on that last program. So definitely using the air blast without any coolant to try to clean out the slot. It also helps you guys see better because it blows away all of the uh, coolant. The coolant I'm using is just, you know, it's not spraying into the slot. It's because uh, when I do the holes, it would be down too low. Um, thanks for the suggestion about getting a Y for my uh, lock line. I definitely want to do that. I've looked at that for a while. I just some reason I'm always like oh I'll do that I'll order that tomorrow and you know tomorrow never comes so so you see it does slow down when I ramp that's something that's important you can't ramp at the same speed that you're cutting because you're engaging the bottom and the sides all at the same time and that can snap your end mill off so typically you do reduce speed when you ramp down to the next level I think I have like a five, five degree ramp, which you only want to do that for, I don't think I would do that on steel. Five degrees isn't too crazy for aluminum. Especially if you're reducing your speed while you're ramping. So see a program like this doesn't even really take advantage of the uh, increase speed rate, but the rapids still cut time. You think about, you know, when we're going from one feature to the next, and the machine's, you know, 200 to 300 inches a minute versus 100, that's three times faster uh, and just the rapids from uh, feature to feature. So every time we bore a hole and move to the next one, we're saving time. I apologize for the air compressor, but I have to let it run. Um, because I've got the mist, the air blast on. So I'll just talk over it. I'm pretty close to the phone here, so pretty sure you should be able to hear me. It's crazy, we're, we're removing such a small amount of material, but this program is gonna be longer than when we hogged out those big slots and removed a ton of material. Some things you just can't Without more RPMs, I can't go any faster. If I had a 15 or 16,000 RPM spindle, I could move twice as fast. So right now we're 64 inches a minute. If I had 16,000 RPMs instead of 8,000, I could double my feed rate. Because the key is the chip can only be so big. Because the chip, the amount of scoop you're taking with every flute, has its limit. So if you spin faster, 
you can move faster. Anyways, guys, the rest of the video is pretty much like this. If you want to drop off, that's fine. Make sure you remember to give me a thumbs up. That really helps. Yeah, see that? That makes a difference when you hop from feature to feature. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. If you got anything out of the video, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it, and it really helps the channel. It tells YouTube to show this content to other people like you. I'm really excited how well this part has turned out. It just, it looks really beautiful with having faced it this time. And the nice thing is I don't have to thread mill it this time. I now have the Palmagrin, uh, or Palmgren tapping arm, so I'll be using that, which will save me time. Because running the thread mill it's a decent amount of time invested in every single hole, where just running the tap in and out is going to be way faster. So, this is the full width slotting. I'm then going to go back on both of these O-ring grooves and go full depth with a single pass and clean up the opposite side of the O-ring groove. Because this is an eighth inch end mill, but the slot is 140 thousandths wide. So that's 15 thousandths of material that's still left on the one sidewall. So I'm doing the outer wall in a ramp, and then the inner wall will just be, you know, full depth. So now I'm the full entire depth, and I'm just cleaning up the inside wall which is only 15,000 step over, if you think about it and do the math. So it's the same amount of chip load basically that I had before. When I was going 15,000 deep with each cut, now I'm going 15,000 over with this last pass. The thing about a CNC is it doesn't guarantee you have good parts. Experience guarantees you have good parts. That's something I'm learning a lot. You can have a great CNC and just break a lot of end mills. And if you have bad fixturing pro uh, practices, you're going to have trash parts. There it is. All done. All right, let's take a peek. Zoom out a little bit here. All right, let's check this out. Guys, look at how much, how many chips are in here. This is just this plate and one other plate. This was completely clean before I started. So there's the slot we just cut, the holes we bored. Try to move slow so it can focus. You, there's, you can't feel any, your fingernail doesn't catch even a single line. There it is. Like I said, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you have suggestions, things I could do better, things I could improve, leave those in the comments below. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. See you later.